yes we're back here for part number three it looks like there's more issues with these cheap alternative gauges that you get on Amazon and eBay uh, when it comes to doing a performance test on a vehicle for either a vacuum decay test or a high pressure nitrogen decay test these are two tests that you use when you put a whole entire system together you especially want to do it if you've just done an evaporator job and you were working on a Prius is roughly seven hours book time if you were working on some B&W's you guys know it's about 12 to 15 some of the nicer ones are seven hours for an evaporator there's a few particular model older Mercedes Benz 21 hours book time to do a evaporator it was a thousand dollars remember the last one was nine hundred and thirty dollars for the evaporators 21 hours removing the dash with a lot of plastic parts many years old brittle actuators diaphragms vacuum hoses everything that you could do to make a mistake you only want to take it apart once because the customer will complain of rattles if you take it apart multiple times or even once sometimes and you put it back together on old, hard, dry, brittle plastic, rubber gaskets and seals, some of that foam padding that they would put between the dash and metal parts to stop them from squeaking, it doesn't work no more. And if you disturb it, you took it apart, you own it and the customer will come back. So let's get back to nitrogen pressure decay test. On video part two of the cheap alternative gauges, when I turned off, I left the gauges filled with uh, nitrogen. This one was at 120 PSI. This one was at 260, 50 PSI. Look back at video number two and you'll remember. But this morning when I got up and came in here and looked at them, and because I was going to overhaul them to give them away to some students at either the automotive uh, local chapter in uh, the college here uh, we have Laney College that has a HVAC uh, trade school over there and students some kind you know can't afford gauges a little out of their budget donate them I'll fix them I'll uh, put what up modify whatever seals need to be modified you know like this now you see the gooey shiny stuff on there that is nylog and I put it down in the shaft and I'm, I'm trying to find the leak or stop the leak. This is Nylog. I already performed it over here. I put it on all the seals where they meet here. This will go back together. Going here down this shaft. Man, that aluminum is thin. So that'll go back in there. And I'm going to repeat yesterday's test again with the high pressure tonight and let you know the conclusion. But I'm letting you know what do you have to do to get a cheap set of gauges to pass the vacuum decay test and nitrogen decay test. So every one of these fittings, I took them off like this. And I put the nylog around each one of these fittings and then screwed them back in. And then on the other side, that were, where's the, damage? these are those bad, cheap plastic uh, adapters, those uh, bushings inside there, they leak all the time. But on this end, because you've got the YF, you're using these adapters. And how that works is you put some of the nylog where that O-ring is, put a little tiny, tiny bit of nylog down in here, you put these two parts together just the ever smallest smidgen of nylog around that tapered 45 degree surface right there and you fit it on the end of the hose like that and so that will seal there nylog is excellent for vacuum vacuum cannot pull through this if you just have small imperfections nylog stops vacuum leaks so that's one way to get your uh, vacuum on this one here I performed it already over on this side on both this one and on this one and all those over there they have roughly the same kind of setup 
Some use Teflon, some use nylon as their mating surface right here. And down far in the hole down there, that little tiny hole, that's your gas passage. That's the thing that's gonna pass the gas from your hose down there into this chamber and then out that small outlet down there. So, nylog will go around those O-rings. You put a little rim of nylog. It's coming down. Just to ever slight amount to go in those threads. Okay. And then I'll put them around the O-rings, which I'm holding the camera right now. And uh, so I'm not gonna try to do that one-handed. I will put this together for tonight. I really don't think I need to show people how to use wrenches to uh, thread down stuff. But basically your, your nylog will go around those areas. Put it all together. I'm gonna hook it back up to the nitrogen, dry nitrogen. I'll pump these back up to 250. This has a limit of 120. So I'll pump these back up to 120, uh, 120. And after performing all these tasks, I'll see if they hold overnight. If they don't hold overnight and it comes down quite a bit, then that's where I'll probably put them under a vacuum, fill them up with some refrigerant, just a little, uh, vapor and then backfeed it with maybe 200 psi of dry nitrogen into the gauges and then take a leak detector and actually go around the sight glass sometimes they leak around the sight glass because there's an o-ring down there i'll take the pop the plastic off i'll leak check inside the gauges see if it's coming up through inside the gauges through the bellows in the back and everything the gaskets on these kind, it can actually leak up the shaft and out where you screw your gauges down. There's a shaft in there. It can actually leak in there. So I'll probably pop off the back of that little sticker, take the screw out, find a snap ring, O-ring, or screw to take this off. Then there'll be snap rings down inside here. Get the snap ring pliers, take it apart, and pull the shaft out. It will have O-rings like this and I'll be using the nylog, or if you're in uh, the automotive trade, which the majority of you watching this are, uh, spark plug boot grease, dielectric grease. It's a silicone grease, it doesn't dry, and it's an excellent vacuum grease. Uh, it's what they use in laboratories and stuff. Uh, a silicone grease for high vacuum, and you can use that. And what you can do is use a tith toothpick, you remove the O-rings, you fill the little groove that the O-rings go in with your dielectric grease, your silicone grease, and then slip your O-rings on there and then put a little silicone on and then put them down the bores and shaft. So getting back to a vacuum decay test and nitrogen decay test. You would pump your vehicle up to say 150 PSI after you've done your evaporator job and you let it set for several hours. Four or five hours overnight is preferable. And when you came back the next morning, it will still be at 150 PSI. It won't be at 149 or 48, it will be at 150 PSI. You've done a good job, your gauges are good. But you cannot do a nitrogen pressure decay test if your, gas, your gauges are the source of your leak. So before you perform any test, you have to perform tests on your new tools and get to know your tools first because they could send you off down a rabbit hole looking for a leak and your problem is in your tools of your trade, which I do not consider these tools of the trade. These are kind of like a joke. It's okay for do-it-yourself or in your backyard. Unfortunately, supposedly, professional garages with big names on them use stuff like this. And uh, I could vouch for that. And every now and then when I'm doing a job, 
I'll grab their gauges and I'll test them in front of the owner or one of the mechanics and show them how their gauges fail. Usually they'll buy a new set after that. So this is it for tonight. This is part three. I'll finish applying the nylog at all the surfaces. I'll pump these back up with the dry nitrogen and we will have a part four tomorrow and find out at what state these gauges are in and if I have more work to do. That's it for tonight. See you guys tomorrow on the eBay Amazon special refrigerant gauges.